just you're constantly building this new life and this new you and your house is never the same but it's sometimes a better house welcome to season four of self carish a show that's about being selfish but also being mindful about it at the same time I'm Megan, your host, and this season is centered all around the topic of healing, whether it's after a breakup or just in general. Anyway, I'm so glad you're here. Let's get into it. Damn, this episode is all over the shop, mostly because it is an interview with a creator I've been following for a very, very long time. I completely have what they call a parasocial relationship with her because her weird and wonderful videos covering like pop culture, dating and life have been my almost constant companion through the very varied stages of my post-married life. So her name is Mel Z. She is also known as Sorry I Brought It Up on TikTok, which seems to be where you find all of the most talented humans these days. And Mel's talent her her talent is staring down the barrel of her camera lens and just dropping megawatt truth and weird pop culture bombs into your algorithm. And that's whether or not she's talking about dealing with anger or specifically needing to normalize women's anger or whether or not she's talking about dating faux woke guys or pondering the nuances of the OJ Simpson trial. She, it, it's, a, it's a fucking talent to be able to talk so naturally into the camera and I, I don't have it and she does and she's blowing up because of it. But I invited her on this season to speak about one topic in particular divorce ranches <laughs> as in a ranch you go to to convalesce while you wait for your divorce they're not a thing now but they absolutely were an actual thing back in the old days and we talk about it in our chat but we also cover i don't know a few deeper topics while enjoying a, a, very, many, a lot of laughs at our own expense because as life is I learned that there is so much more to Mel than just witty videos about pop culture and dating, which of course makes sense. She's a fully formed human that lives beyond TikTok. Who'd have thought, Megan? But seriously, it can be easy to forget that the people who create content for us all are living lives full of texture and challenges in history. The internet, it kind of flattens things it democratizes it brings us together but sometimes you only get like that two-dimensional version of people so enjoy this conversation about divorce ranches dating mistakes death the algorithm and everything in between let's do it quick 10 second pre-interview plug for the plotline and if you haven't signed up for the plotline waitlist please do it is my you know single one woman attempt to shake up the journal and notebook industry because i am a massive proponent of journaling as a tool for healing and also for achieving your goals they're just there's nothing i don't think a journal cannot achieve because i do it all the time and if you go on my gram, there's photos of them. I have them in a safe in my room. I don't know why I keep them. I'm scared to throw them away in case somebody reads them. But that's actually why I've made the plot line because it mixes scripting, goal setting, and narrative therapy together in one awesome, beautifully designed book that you would be happy to have on your coffee table and sh- like showcase and for people to read. And it's you wouldn't be ashamed if someone randomly picked it up and looked through it. So. I, I don't think journals should be kept a secret, but the plot line helps you format it in a way that it doesn't have to be like a secret. Anyway, we should be proud of our journals. You can sign up for it at doitfortheplotline.com, but also if you follow the Substack, you'll be alerted to all the links in the show notes over and out. All right, Mel Z. It, sound, it sounds like a Spice Girl thing. Um, I, I just want to say I'm so glad to have you on the show finally I have about 10 of your videos saved in my little podcast ideas folder because you just come out with these banger of like ideas about you know dating pop culture like weird celebrity stories I don't know you just it's fascinating to watch but for people who aren't familiar with you and what you do like how do you sum up what you do for people who haven't seen what you do Um, thank you so much for saying that. Oh my God. Um, I, I have a little spiel that I give in every video now, which I think has helped me. (laughs) 
I say I'm Mel Z and I talk about death, dating, true crime and weird pop culture things because I was like for for like I've only been doing it for like a year and I was kind of trying to find where what I like to do and what did well and what I like to have conversations about and I can't narrow it down to one thing those are the things yeah I I hate that we all have to niche down in this like algorithmic talk like culture so go you for not doing that but did you study I don't know sociology or something at uni university absolutely not no <laughs> I um I have a social media marketing agency I run with my brother um called Ra Ra Creative Co in Vancouver Canada and um yeah I I mean I went to school for graphic design and writing and I've always been a writer Actually, I think being a writer lends itself pretty beautifully to social media and TikTok because you you just have to tell stories and that's really all it is when you boil it down to its purest form. So that makes sense. Um, but I've got you on the show, it, you know, to talk about something in particular and it just blew my mind when you talked about it because I was like, why don't people do this more? But it was the concept of divorce ranches. And I don't know why this was the topic, but it just sparked something in me. And it, 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 I was like, we need to bring these back. So can you, can you elaborate a little bit more on what they are for the people? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I know why you love it. It's the same reason I love it, because it's like a feminist utopia. It's incredible. When I, I just went to Vegas, which is like a fucking hellscape. And I, I don't know why I went and I would never go again. It's a, it's a nightmare. Um, but we went to the mob museum and in the mob museum, there was a, um, section on divorce ranches, which I had never heard of before. And I was like stuck to this wall, like reading all the things. And, um, in the U S up until the early 1900s, um, you had to wait a year to get divorced and you had to prove that, um, you were either um, physically abused or that you'd been cheated on. And only in Nevada in the early 1900s, they changed the law to try to get more people to come live there um, so that divorces became, it was six months you could get a divorce. And it was going pretty well. And then in the early 1930s, they were like, we need to up this. And so they made it so that you could get a divorce in six weeks. But the stipulation was that you had to live there for six weeks. So people started opening up their houses and like like the original Airbnb, right? Like they would have like, you know, rooming rooms that you could come and stay in and wait out your divorce. And then they started opening like, um, have you ever heard of dude ranches? I I'd like heard the term before, but didn't really know what it was. It's like a tourist um, ranch that you can come to and like watch the cowboys do their things, whatever. And so they turned a lot of those into divorce ranches. And so women from all over the country would come and stay on these properties and just wait out their divorces. And so they were like, they were getting so popular that they were like, God, we need to give these women something to do. So they had all these activities like horseback riding and like target practice and swimming and gambling and drinking and like they would literally just hang out in on this ranch like it sounds so incredible and it's like the whole like it sounds incredible on its own but then the fact that they're like waiting to divorce their awful husbands just makes it so much better I love it <laughs> yeah me too like I just it blew my mind I'm like uh, wait 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 why why did we stop doing this because I mean especially in Australia at the moment although I think it is global we are having you know the big divorce is happening and everyone's breaking up and I think it's a lot of it is driven by COVID but also just because some marriages are terrible and marriage as a concept is very archaic but I don't know I feel like we've regressed like that that was a very progressive concept like back in the day to convalesce from your marriage in a place with other divorcees at the same time mm -hmm. absolutely to have the community like to yeah. heal in community is like you know that seems nuts for the 30s in america it's really progressive for the 30s but ha have you gone through a divorce yourself no i never <laughs> wanted to get married i just noticed a big bug on my wall and i'm like oh god um, 
I never wanted to get married. I, <laughs> I feel like I, um, I've gone through big breakups. When I get into relationships, they last a long time. Um, but yeah, and my last partner actually died in 2020. So that was a huge, traumatic, insane sort of experience. Um, but I've never been through a divorce. I've heard that it is horrific. Oh, oh my God, Mel. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. You, it, you never know what people are dealing with, do you? Like, th- like you have this persona online. You're hilarious and sarcastic and funny, and you never know that you would be or have had to deal with that. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, it's been a lot. I actually, um, I wrote it down because one of your last episodes, you said this thing and I was like, oh my God, um, when people have their houses fall down around them, they never build it back up again the same. And I was like, oh my God, yes. Because I think like we're all, we all think that like, whether it's death or divorce or breakups or whatever, like that we need to get back to, we need to like recover and get back to where we were before. But like, you can't, it doesn't exist anymore. The thing that you're trying to go back to that you, that reality is gone. And like with death, it dies with that person. Like you can't even, you can't even um, repair anything with them anymore. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like that part's just gone. And the, the new life that you build is so different and so informed by that, right? So like this new reality for me is like, obviously it was like horrific and and tragic and whatever, he was only 33 and um, it's it's been real intense, but this new life that I have now is like, it's, it's very, I'm so aware of like, you know, being grateful for people and, and like, I, I, I think like it's so informed my dating life too. Like I, I would never, like I was dating for a little while after he died, like a year after he died, I started dating. And of course, when you're like going through trauma, you like pick the worst imaginable people. The people I was choosing was like, oh my God, I feel embarrassed of it now. Like I, sometimes I like have flashbacks of like a conversation I had with somebody and I'm like, I can't believe I sat there and listened to you. Like, I, that was that was a different me that was a different me that that tolerated that and was like this you seem interesting let's yeah. go on a second date like fuck no so like you know you just you're constantly building this new life and this new you and your house is never the same but it's sometimes a better house you know like the ways that you figure out how to heal like you you make different choices right and and do better hopefully oh totally I'm so glad you brought that up because the other day I was like making coffee in my kitchen and then I just shut it and shook my head and I was like oh my god I can't believe I let that man in my body (laughs) oh oh my god I know so yeah taking time to heal especially like after a breakup or a traumatic you know thing that's happened is so important and that's as you know is the the reason for this season of the pod because you know, all the earlier episodes, you people can just read, like, listen to them and go through it and go, oh, yeah, I can see where she was in her healing journey right there. But maybe that's why this, you know, the divorce ranch concept appealed to me so much, because like, what if there was a place where people who could just identify, oh, I'm going through a really, like, I'm, I'm not healed right now. Can I go somewhere to heal? Is that just what the wellness center is now? I don't know. We, do we need to just make divorce ranches a thing again? Ooh, I don't know. I used to be a drug addict and I went to rehab and that was incredible. Like not, it was, it was incredible. Like it was hilarious. Um, because obviously like it's, it's an, ins- you're just in a crazy environment and like mm-hmm. this bug is getting closer and closer to me and I don't like it. <laughs> it I took notes during, during rehab. I was taking notes because it, I was, it was just like the comedy of it was just so potent. And like, I learned a lot of things, but it was also like, you know, faith based 12 step bullshit, like, please, God, no. And, um, but like, you know, that I think is, that's, I think, maybe the closest thing. And, and I appreciated that about it, that it was, it was taking me out of my life, and putting me into a different environment with different people. And so it's like, you start thinking about yourself differently in those sort of situations because otherwise you don't really get an opportunity to leave your life so it's like I appreciate that I had a drug problem now right because 
yeah. because I'm alive for one. And like in Vancouver where we have a fentanyl crisis, you know, and all over the world, but um, I, I don't know if there's any other option. Certainly that is, is ex it's not accessible to, to people. They're like wellness retreats and things are like for rich people. Like you, you can't access those sorts of things. So like, I don't know. I don't know what would be a equivalent to a divorce ranch. I just don't think they exist. I was talking to someone recently on the pod about, you know, healing. And they said, you know, healing is healing whether or not you've gone through a breakup or a death in the family or, you know, you're because your body doesn't know the difference. So it's all traumatic. And I don't mean I, I'm moving house. So my I'm all over the shop today. But like not to minimize different people's experiences, but I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to butcher this, but is it, was it a similar sort of process of, you know, going through, you know, healing from drug addiction or healing from your, from your, the death of your partner? I wrote an article about it actually. Um, I, uh, about specifically that the, um, the <laughs> comparing the two, recovering from drug addiction and recovering from grief and how they're so similar and in like weird ways, but like just the sense that like, you're never the same again is huge. And like that you're like marked, you know, like when you're like, um, you know, cause for a couple of years I felt like grief girl, that was my identity, grief girl. And people would be like, Oh, Mel, how are you doing? Oh, God. you know, like that tone and and same with drugs right if you're a known you know ex addict or whatever um which a lot of people continue to really identify with that be that becomes their new identity is being an ex addict and like you know you can really get sucked into that and and it's a trap because that's not all you are and and you can like you can build a new life after death, after divorce, after, you know, um, drug addiction, after all of these things, right? We just like always have the opportunity. You're going to carry some fucking trauma though. Woo! But hopefully you can have a sense of humor. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes I think the most interesting people are the ones who have gone through some trauma. Just, a, you know, just a little bit, just to like add some flavor to the mix. No, I agree. I agree. They're my favorite people. And, and I always say this about drug addicts, like, People are so judgmental about drug addicts, but they are usually the most empathic, kind people who are just so thoughtful. And that's the reason they probably had a drug problem to begin with, was because they were trying to escape from how much they feel all the time, right? Like, so I love them. I love them. You know, to be fair, I think we're all addicts in a way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, in a way, like, you know, we all have our vices and addictions like I, I gotta be honest and everyone who knows me can will attest to this is I'm addicted to my phone and it I'm I almost it's almost like smoking I do feel a little ashamed of it but if I'm spiraling I will scroll uh, like for a very very embarrassingly long time <laughs> but in a way like it's just like social you know inverted commas socially acceptable but I genuinely think in like decades later they're gonna be look at you know, having a screen like up against your eyeballs twenty four seven, as like what 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 were we thinking? <laughs> but I digress. There there are people who listen to this show who are going through all sorts of different scenarios, and a lot of them may also be dealing with the death of someone in their family. I mean, what what is your biggest takeaway or a piece of advice you would give those people? Um, I think like. The big thing for me was like, there's no, it's not linear. None of it is like you, the like, you know, um, grief, like five steps of grief or whatever, like, for, and that's for anything, not just death, like for losing relationships, losing jobs, losing whatever you lost something. The, the idea that there's like stages and then you're over it is just absolute bullshit. And, and also that people go through the same stages, right? Like you don't sometimes, you know, going and like fucking a bunch of idiots was part of my grieving process. And there's nothing wrong with that. Who cares? I'm fine now. I, I survived. It wasn't maybe the smartest thing or, or like the healthiest, but 
that was part of my process and and whatever right and like and and like people being like oh you're not over that yet like fuck you i don't want to talk to that person anymore like because you know what they it's an indication of how little they can handle their emotions when they can't handle yours right like i've spent my whole life being told that i'm too much and i i i do have a lot of emotion i do feel a lot right but like i don't want to be around people that don't love that about me anymore like i just turned 40 i'm like no i don't i don't want to be around it and and like just honoring your own process and like recognizing that everybody's different and you're going to make mistakes and it's okay. Like who cares? Try to like have fun with it. <laughs> yes. Well, one, I can't believe you're 40. What is your secret? And two, it's so weird. I don't know if this is the same for you. I am just turned 39, but I actually feel younger than I did. I don't know, like five years ago. At, or even especially I feel younger now than I did in my 20s what's with what is that I completely agree I was just saying to my friend that you couldn't pay me to be 21 it was awful like it was awful I was so insecure and so desperate for validation and so like needing people to like me and needing men to want me and like all that shit and like the like lack of caring what people I mean of course I still care what people think like of course I'm I'm human but um I care so much less so much less it's incredible oh, can I on. just take a second I, I have to deal with this bug it's like oh it's God. one of those like stink bugs do you know what those are yeah <laughs> do it circling around it. and it's just staring at me I'm scared it's gonna like jump on me <laughs> no you go get it and then we'll come back <laughs> I grabbed it with tissue like a psycho I felt it I felt it oh <laughs> I love it <laughs> okay oh, well, well let's venture off some of the painful parts of your life because you are so much more than you know we, you know, we're more than like the bad things that happen to us. For me, you are one of those like comfort creators. Like th there have been many moments over the last like six months or a year where I've been like hiding under my blankets and like you're like just scrolling and your face will turn up and you'll be just hilariously talking about dating you know, inverted commas, woke guys, or talking about Howard Hughes, or, you know, divorce ranches in Nevada. Like, it's just like, you become, when you are prolific on TikTok, you don't realize that you do become like a, you're talking to the camera, but you're actually talking to millions of people <laughs> who are just relying on you to kind of create a sense of routine in an ever chaotic world. I'm totally over, am I overstating it? I don't think so. <laughs> But you sent me, like, after I watched your video about divorce ranches, I, you know, did a little research because, you know, why not? And I found out that the concept of divorcing someone for mental cruelty wasn't even allowed until the mid-50s. Like, it was just this very big reminder of how new and recent the concept of breaking free from a bad marriage is. And I guess getting your crystal ball out, what do you think marriage is going to look like over the next 50 years? Um... Honestly, like, <clears throat> I think that it's starting to die out. I, I don't see, it's hard to say, okay, because there's two things about it. One, it's more beneficial for men to get married than, than women. Like, we're just talking about straight marriage. It's more beneficial for uh, men than it is for women, but also it's protection for women. So when a man is like, I don't know if you follow this person on TikTok. Her name's Cecilia Regina. She is yes, yes. But it's so weird because she, you can't actually contact her. She doesn't put her face up, and she, like, I, I've quoted her in the pod a few times, and I, it sounds so dumb because you're like, hey, I'm just quoting Cecilia Regina two seven five from TikTok. You sound it sounds unhinged, but yeah, she's amazing. Anyway. Yeah, you know, I know she never shows her face or anything. I just I love her so much, but. She's always talking about um, how marriage is really just it's like it's framed as this thing that all women want and that men are like begrudgingly like agreeing to. But it's like they're the ones who actually benefit from it. Right. And like, what do what do we get from it? You know, like not not that much. Generally, I don't know. Like I'm I'm in a stage right now where I'm not even dating. I, I've I'm I've I'm completely like. 
I'm just being celibate, you know, it's just not dating and like loving it. Like I've never felt so free. And like, I, I just don't want to deal with bullshit from men anymore. And like, I, you know, if, if somebody comes along, great, but like dating apps, oh my God, no. Yeah. Did you see the Bumble celibacy billboard? sort of chaos that happened you know for anyone listening bumble is a dating app as you know and they put up those billboards saying you know full well of our sellers the c is not the answer and because it's a reaction to every this 4b movement where women are not i don't know having meaningless sex anymore oh it was pretty brutal yeah yeah i thought it was real stupid and clearly driven by men right like but but also a good indication that we're being heard right because the like 4b movement and like tiktok i honestly i know this sounds like a conspiracy theorist thing but like i feel like they're shutting trying to shut tiktok down because women are talking on there and being like yeah we don't need you and you know like just just opting out of marriage and and relationship yeah no i don't think that's a conspiracy i think you're absolutely right there i actually don't think that i saw a truthful depiction of marriage like you know until tiktok like you know the the women would walk through the front door with their phones and show the mess that was waiting for them when they just you know left the house you know and left their partner to look after the kids for a day or so and I I think prior to that people were all like good housekeeping pretending you know Instagram feed perfection and then TikTok just went nope this is the reality and everyone's like actually that doesn't look too great and consequently now people are like I don't know if it's for me anymore Mm -hmm. that's why they're that's why they're fucking with abortion rights that's why they're fucking with the uh you know um birth control in the states like they they need those workers they need the voters like they yeah they need women to be having children and like it's tiktok has been so important for that though it it really has like i talk about tiktok like as if it's like a friend of mine and people are like oh god here we go but honestly like when i started making tiktoks i was actively dating fools and like mistreating myself and feeling like this is what I need to be doing and like because I didn't understand the conversations that were being had I didn't know about the conversations that were being had I didn't know about the community the huge community of women who are like this is not acceptable and and so I was like it was it's because of TikTok that I like don't date anymore it's because of TikTok that I've like like reevaluated like what I want in my life and I know that sounds crazy to some people because especially people who aren't content creators like they're like oh god you just love seeing yourself talk but like it's so much more than that right like it's the community it's huge it's it's community it's creation it's connection and I you know People like, oh, they just create little videos on TikTok. But I think people who create valuable content that helps people, it, it, it's a public service. You're helping people. Uh, the, the, the internet is full of shit. But so when people come and deliver quality, you're like, these people are gold. You're gold. We need to hold on to you. So many great creators on there that like I'm constantly being inspired by. And like it, uh, it informs my life 100 percent. it's you know human beings are fascinating but we're at the pointy end of the interview now so um as you know this season is all around the concept of healing and as someone who spends a lot of time thinking about and analyzing the world how do you like to find a sense of peace in this chaotic mess that we call a planet okay i would love to say that i find a sense of peace by like doing yoga or like writing in my journal or something, but like, <laughs> and I do to, to some degree, not yoga, but my, you know, journaling, creative things for sure. But I honestly disassociate a lot. Like I, I, I am a single childless woman. I have, my time is mine. And so I, I've, I just watched Sopranos for the 10th time. And let me tell you the 10th time is incredible. I like, I, <laughs> I do a lot of dumb shit. I watch dumb TV. I like, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I also like, I really, I kind of go 
nuts when I'm alone. I'm like Eeyore when I'm by myself. And then when I see my friends and family, I'm like, it, it like lights me up. So I spend a lot of time with my friends and my family and like just, you know, community. And I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have anything specific that like brings me peace. I have a lot of anxiety. I don't know. I don't know when I feel peace. I meditate maybe for like two minutes of a 20 minute meditation. I feel like peaceful, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same, but no. like, what, no. we need to normalize normal human things to do instead of like, oh, I do yoga, oh, oh I meditate. You know, watching Sopranos can is its own meditation. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you go. I feel like we could talk for hours. But Mel, Z, that weird girl, or sorry I brought it up. There's so many different names for you on TikTok, but... Go, I'll put the link in the show notes for anyone who's listening. She's amazing. She's funny. It's awesome. So thank you so much, Mel. And I'm so glad I got this time to chat to you. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad we finally made it happen. But what do you think? How do you feel about divorce ranches? Do we need to bring them back? Or do you have any thoughts on the whole, you know, TikTok algorithm, the conspiracy theory that it's getting banned in the US because we're all deciding to opt out of marriage. And who knows? There's, we covered a lot of ground in this conversation. I'm not going to lie. But Mel just kind of is one of those people that you want to like just riff on different topics with her. But I hope you got as much out of this episode as I got out of making it. It is three in the morning here and I'm about to move house. So wish me luck. And just a reminder, if you do want to sign up for The Plotline, it's at doitfortheplotline.com. But all the links are in the show notes and I will see you next week. Bye.